Hi, welcome to part 4 of the Z80 project. Uh, this one is the address decoding. Um, sorry it's been a while since I put a video up. It's uh, I've been moving my uh, my lab around. Uh, my lab is nearly nearly ready to go. Just a few more things to do and uh, so I should be actually doing a, a video with some actual real live electronics soon enough. Uh, but yeah, but this video is going to be uh, based on the address decoding on a Z80 system. It can be used with um, others like 6502 or any of the 8080 or the 68000 type. But, uh, you may have to make some changes based on their architecture. Um, but I would leave that up to you if, if you want to attempt to do that. Uh, but this is purely based on on the Z80 system that I'm currently working on. Things we'll be covering in this episode will be uh, firstly uh, using four banks of 16 kilobytes of memory map uh, and then we'll be covering the uh, eight banks of eight kilobyte memory map and as a bit of an added bonus I'll, uh, I'll be talking about dynamic bank switching um, which will allow us to take one of the banks from the first two items here and uh, and expand it from anywhere up to 256 separate um, memory devices uh, but more on that when we get to it now with four banks of the uh, of 16k bytes of memory in the, in the memory map here uh, basically uh, as it states we're splitting the uh, the whole memory map into uh, to four banks, each of 16 kilobytes each, and um, you know you can mix and match whether you want them to be ROM, RAM. Basically, you uh, you would like some of each in in a, um, otherwise it'd be useless really. Um, but yeah, uh, you basically be using the top two address lines, which is the A1415, to select the 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 bank that's being used and um, that would basically give you 16 uh, kilobytes each for each bank and uh, yeah you'd get some address decoding logic to do that. I have shown below here a truth table showing the uh, the logic states of what needs to be done to make each bank active and these are active low so a zero in the bank line will uh, activate that bank <coughs> and um, you know, it's it, it's a very simple uh, bit of logic that handles this. Um, below I've shown the, uh, the boolean uh, equations for it, and I uh, simplified a few of them. Um, you could probably get them simpler, but I d didn't put too much effort into that yet, uh, which you'll see why in a minute. Um, basically, it narrows it down to, um, to basically a few gates needed. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you can complete this using two ICs because you usually get four or gates in one IC, and uh, you can get four NANDs in a quad NAND package, and you can use the a NAND as a NOT gate if you tie the inputs together. So that would be uh, would be doable with two chips all together. We could go for the uh, the method of using the two chips, uh, or we could even uh, use a PLD which is uh, good but you know I I can't find a decent PLD that my program will work with and uh, yet alone the software to actually make the uh, the code into them so what I would do is I would use a 74LS139 which is a dual 2 to 4 line decoder slash multiplexer I have used this in the past with a, um, a little Z80 system I did uh, just over a year ago uh, while I was recovering from knee surgery and uh, it seems to work fine um, I actually am going to be ordering some of those in as soon as I get my uh, student loan in um, which is another reason why I've been delaying doing hardware stuff uh, other than my lab not being ready but basically uh, yeah this device it's, it's a simple all-in-one uh, for what we need here and it's a dual one so we could actually use it to uh, do some I/O decoding on the address lines as well. I mean, address decoding in the I/O line as well. The shown diagram below 
uh, show, basically shows how to use the one half of the chip and hook it up in the uh, in the four bank configuration as uh, as I've shown you and uh, and as I mentioned here you should basically either ground or pull up any remaining pins on the uh, seven bore device uh, just as a as a matter of standard you know it's that way it's in a known state uh, some people have had a lot of problems with those in the past for not doing that. Our second method method I'm discussing is the uh, 8 banks of 8 kilobyte memory map um, as it says basically uh, we split to 8 banks of 8 kilobytes each um, basically each one would be its own separate RAM, ROM chip whatever, mix and match as you like and this would use the top three address lines uh, rather than the two, which leaves you with 13 lines for the actual addressing, which is why you only get 8 kilobytes rather than 16 kilobytes. Um, but depending on how you you want to lay your system out, if uh, you know 8 kilobytes is enough for each chip, then that's you know that's good for you. But if you want more, you could uh, you could do some fancy address decoding further on and actually get several banks going to the same chip at different parts of the chip but that's a little bit of on the advanced line and I'm not going to discuss that here. I may may do it in a further video but I'm not going to be doing that for now. Shown is the uh, the truth table for uh, this decoding method and uh, it's very similar to the the four bank version uh, as you can see and shown here is the uh, is the boolean uh, expressions for each of the banks uh, now I haven't gone into simplifying it uh, for the same reasons as uh, as previously mentioned for the uh, the four bank version as with the four bank method we can actually use a single uh, generic chip to actually do the decoding uh, in this case it's actually the uh, 74LS138 uh, now this is a 3 to 8 line decoder slash demuxer, demultiplexer. Uh, there's only one of these in each package, unfortunately. Well, I don't mean unfortunately, you know. I suppose it's unfortunate. Um, but basically this has all the needs we have. Um, so if you look here, there's um, three select lines for this device. Uh, what I would recommend doing is the E1 and E2 which are active low, you tie them together and then you use that into the memory request line and then the E3 which is an active uh, it's an active high, you tie that high that way uh, it takes care of the of the chip enable lines <clears throat> then you just hook up A13, A14 and A15 to the A0, A1, A2 on the, on the device and then you're left with the Y outputs, which are basically your bank selects for uh, for your banks. Now we come to the third part of this video, uh, which is the dyna dynamic bank switching. Um, <clears throat> this is meant as a add-on to the other decoding methods, or whichever decoder method you have. Now, this will allow you to dedicate a bank to be uh, used to switch in and out um, different RAM or ROM chips um, uh, under software control. Now, a similar method to this is actually used in the Sinclair Spectrum Plus 2 computer, um, but the way they have it set is once it's set, it locks itself out, and you know, until you reset the, the computer, <laughs> which is good for what they were doing, but you know, for what I want to do, it's it's not that good. Um, basically, you'll be putting a D-type latch um, in an I/O decoded address, and basically you write an I/O, you know, you you output a byte to that address, and it'll store that byte in the latch, and then this latch will then you can enable it using a a bank select. 
and the data that comes out it can either be bitmapped to a, uh, a specific pin uh, sorry the byte output can be bitmapped so the specific bit set will then enable a chip or you can then further decode it the 8 bits up to 256 devices um, so this can be quite an expansion of your computer if, uh, if it's used right and uh, yeah so we'll have a look at that now part of research in this topic I actually did simulate this circuit and and I found it to work quite well now for my simulation I used a uh, 74 LS573 which is an Oxl D type latch <clears throat> and um, basically I connected the the data lines here to uh, a dummy data bus uh, my simulation I used four uh, bits but it does work with eight now the LE pin which is latch enable is the pin that is used to load the data into the uh, the latch uh, you would put this to a decoded um, I.O. address so basically when you would address it it actually activates this high and then it will allow you then it will read the data bus into the latch um, as long as the latch enable pin is low and then the data is secured inside the latch and then <clears throat> when the output enable pin is asserted low it will then output whatever's in the latch onto the output pins and the output enable pin will be connected to the bank select pin from the circuits previously described and that's how this the circuit works okay um, what we have here is the uh, a simulation I'm only using four data lines here but in fact we'll be using eight when it comes to the actual device we have the decoded select pin here which will be decoded from the I.O. pins that's when we want to set up the, uh, the port and then we have the um, the bank select here Oops, sorry. Uh, that is from the previous circuit I show so let's go ahead and start the simulation okay now this will be the uh, the state it's in so let's um, let's select so basically what we'll be doing is I'll be showing the bitmap example because we'll be putting these can go to individual chip selects of um, of different devices and that could work or, um, or this can be further decoded into up to 256 different devices so let's let's just say that is what pattern we want so basically we'd use the IO write command uh, so we'd write this uh, the byte that you see here um, to the IO address and what it would do it would select that actually we need that high because it's not used um, it would select this byte and then basically write it and then when it's not selected anymore it would be selected. This will be stored internally so no matter what's written here and then when we select the bank basically this line will be made active and as you can see that line is shown there regardless of what's on the data pins here um, you also want to take this output enable line and probably and it or, or it with the uh, the other devices afterwards now it's up to you what you what devices you want to use on that I'm probably not going to be using this in my computer right now maybe further down the line I may do it but this is just the simulation to show it see when it's disconnected these go high impedance okay so that is the uh, basically uh, the dynamic selection I hope the information I've discussed here is uh, insightful and uh, useful to people. Um, I will 
hopefully be making some more videos soon. Um, as soon as I get my lab up and running, uh, which shouldn't be too long. And I'm going to order some more parts in off eBay and through DigiKey as well, and then uh, we can start actually getting to making the uh, the Z80 computer and uh, and show all this actually in live action rather than just slideshow format. Um, but anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, thank you for watching, and uh, please like the video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, and uh, I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.